Okay, welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner Classic Less Known Classics. This episode number 2103 and double shot number 1997. We are discussing uh, two X-Men trades here. One is something from Rob Liefeld, the other is the finale for a series. Well, a volume per se. First up we have from Rob Liefeld, Deadpool, Bad Blood, which of course written and drawn by Rob Liefeld with co-writing done by Chris Sims and Chris Bowers, the writers behind the popular X-Men 92 series. That got cancelled after just, like, when, when, when it became an ongoing series of Secret Wars, it lasted for 15 issues, and then the book got axed. Yes, you cancel a book people like. Because people love the X-Men 92 animated series. Now, this book in particular is basically Rob Liefeld writing his own characters. That he, a lot of them he helped create. There's a lot of focus on Deadpool himself. <clears throat> and his account with the various characters Rob Liefeld has created over the years. Shatterstar, Cable... Uh, I don't know who this one is. Was well, he appearance in here by Garrison Cade? Yes, he is a character created by Rob, Rob Liefeld. And is the second ever Weapon X. Yep. He also gone through X-Force. The best way to describe this miniseries is that it's Rob Liefeld's love letter to Deadpool as a character. And also his own franchise of characters that people know him for. Heck, the way he does his characters... It's similar to how he did back in the 90s. Where, oh, by the way, Shatterstar, he literally ripped off this very character, the great Prophet. The character Prophet, that is. <clears throat> by the way, Rob Leff also inked these issues. Yes, he does do some inking. The cover art is done by... the actually don't list all the cover artists, but... Mostly put it just Deadpool going... like It's like, basically, it's like Rob Liefeld... Like doing, it's it's like writing a book for Deadpool. That's most of what this book is, and him just like revisiting like. But he says his character's name is Thumber. This giant character, I think, is the original character of this book, and mostly put it just Deadpool being Deadpool. It's like how Rob Life on intended to write him. Oh, by the way, we have Cam. We have a small appearance here by Domino. Yes, Domino is here because she's another Rob Life on character. And look, it's X-Force. Yeah. Though, here's the thing. This Domino here is not the legit Domino. This is actually Veronica. Uh, her real name is Veronica, a.k.a. Copycat. We also have Warbird, a.k.a. John Proudstar. This character is not a creation of Liefeld, but... Three out of four are created by Rob Liefeld. This is basically pretty much X Force. We have appearance by Mutant Liberation, which is more Rob Liefeld stuff. <clears throat> because it's Rob Liefeld, paint of Rob Liefeld. Yep. And look, here's Cable with a freaking gun. That looks like a it looks like a big huge pipe. Plus, I love it basically that when he did the, uh, whoever did the lettering had X-Force under the, the classic logo. I think Liefeld was one to design that one. Mm -hmm. So you could say this is presumably after Deadpool's debut and probably just before his, his appearance in, in X-Force number two. That's probably where you can place this. That's my guess anyways. But it's always great to see char these characters again. This miniseries is actually pretty good. I, I, I do like this. I'm going to give this book roughly a 9 out of 10. Because basically I do enjoy Deadpool. And I like reading Rob Liefeld stuff. And yes, it's a mature book. Is there any swear in the book? Not really. It's basically parent rising for the, for the violence. Alright, next up is the final trade for Excalibur. This is Excalibur Falling 4 by Tina Howard. Yeah, one trade longer than the Hellions. Of course, not the last. Now the book would later be relaunched as Knights of X afterwards. I'll get to that. So in these issues, now these issues mostly will be the end of this version of Excalibur, and they have not appeared since then. Nope. The book contains issues 22, 26. Excuse me, of Excalibur, Volume Four. Unofficially, it's Volume Five because the third volume 
I officially was Nuke Excalibur. I count as much. Actually, no. Uh, this would actually be the... Not the fifth volume. Yeah, fifth volume. Because, well, the first two volumes did feature the original Excalibur. Third volume had nothing to do with Excalibur, just by name only. Just was Genosha's version of Excalibur. There was new Excalibur, and then this volume in particular. Mm -hmm. Yep, mostly put in these issues. We have basically Excalibur... Well, dealing with some aspects effects of the Hellfire Gala. Yep, that's referenced in here. By the way, Storm, not Storm, uh, Rogue was voted off the team. She was made, she was promoted to the main X-Men team. Probably for the first time since Kelly Thompson wrote the book. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, and mostly we just deal with, like, stuff with Avalon... By the way, uh, Doug Grant, we also see Return of Pete Wisdom in here. Yeah, because it's Calvary. Can't be Calvary Pete Wisdom. Yep. Also here with Doctor Doom, Mad Jack Jaspers. And this leads into something that would happen in the previous set of issues, where there was this alternate reality version created of Calvary version of, I think it was like, Cap, I think it was Rogue, Jubilee, and I think Gambit. And they put on trial for the creation of this reality. And then Merlin, basically Merlin shows up the book early on, where he frees Arthur and restores him to his full power. Then, of course, he, then his next time he appears, he, of course, well, breaks into the Citadel, which is my 13, reveals, oh yeah, I'm a, I, I, I'm a witness. And he's like, what, what's going on here? Because apparently King Arthur has summoned an entire freaking army outside of the Citadel. The center, though, run by the Catholic Britain Corps. And it turns all out war, which later leads to Citadel falling. But Avalon, which, by the way, happened at, since the first arc of this, this run, have been ruled by his role by Jamie Bardock. And, of course, despite the fact that they have taken Citadel, they have not won yet. This is basically a partial victory for them. They do explain how Seratine is able to overflow her father. Yes, Seratine is the daughter of Merlin. The way Teen Hire wrote him in here. Now, Merlin, usually when you see him, usually he's picked as a wise, very good like a figure. Here, he's a full blown villain. And Chunk King Arthur, a beloved character from medieval lore, into a villain as well because they really want to claim their freaking throne. So the Bardock family had to evacuate from Avalon. Yep, the Krakatoa. Because it's probably the only place they could go because they. By the way, uh, Pete Wisdom, he also reactivates strike if you know what strike is like strike it's not the organization that was part of shield in captain america with a soldier yes but this is the comic version of strike strike was the best way to describe it. it's the uk's version of shield where it's mostly filled with psychics <clears throat> and uh pete wisdom ordered that all of them get resurrected and now strike is part of krakatoa okay and of course, the final issue has it where, despite having have the whole, because it was teased before that Betsy Braddock had asked Serene how she overthrew her father. In the final issue, it just her explaining that. And of course, we have her leading a charge to try to take back Sido. This book would later be relaunched as Knights of X, which sadly lasted for five issues and then it ended in Tina Howard jumping over to DC to do Catwoman, which I enjoy Catwoman stuff. In the case, the final trade of this book. It's really good. I thoroughly enjoy this book. It's just what Excalibur is supposed to be. Pure. No, it's basically like like the original Excalibur. It's a mix between the Catherine stuff and the X-Men stuff. Though, I'll get to a little more of that in a minute. But this book, really good. This book, a 9 out of 10. Final thoughts on this book? <clears throat> Strange thing, though. This actually was one of the first books they launched with the Krakatoa Initiative. And unlike Marauders, which got restarted... This book got relaunched as Knights of X. And then it got cancelled. But it still had the same writer. Yeah, by the way, the artist is Marcus too in the book. Yep. <clears throat> it is interesting how to feature Doctor Doom in this book. Especially since that... Here's the thing. If you read any previous volume of Excalibur, Doctor Doom does not make an appearance. I don't remember him appearing in the, in the original volume of this series. Or the miniseries second volume. And I know he didn't appear in the third volume. Or New Excalibur, this book. 
despite me being part of the Krakatoa initiative when it comes to X-Men, it does not focus. It's like in the case of Wolverine. It has barely an effect on the Krakatoa stuff. Why, you might ask? Because the book is not set on Krakatoa. It is set on Avalon, a country ruled by Jimmy Bardock. It's basically them defending that particular realm. That's the whole purpose of Excalibur. And when the book started off, Apocalypse was part of the team. Yes, Apocalypse was on the roster. Yes, and then after the X of Swords, he was banished from Krakatoa to be with his girlfriend. By the way, also, Doug Ramsey's wife shows up in the last few issues of this book, and she has appeared sporadically since then. Now, you might be curious, though. Oh, by the way, she was actually featured in the relaunch of the book. And she's featured, like, one issue of Mutants and final issue of Exterminators. And that's basically been it for her since the book wrapped up. But what about the rest of Excalibur? Well, what about, let's say, Megan? Yeah, Ma Megan's part of this group, too. Yeah, she's the wife of the uh, Captain Britain, who, by the way, in this book is renamed to Captain Avalon. Because... Brian Bardock lost his position as Cat the Brin due to grabbing the wrong object. Yes, for some reason they had a switch where, oh, let's have her, let's have him grab a, not a sword, but this gem, and that somehow loses spot as Captain Britain. And that's pretty much basically what happened with her. Now, here's the thing. After this book wrapped up, she was part of Knights of X. Right after the book basically wrapped up, she was part of this group. And, well, that's pretty much what they did with the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the feature in Knights of X. And that's it. That's all they featured her in. I think, okay, how about the original Psylocke, Betsy Braddock, who's currently Captain Britain? If you're curious... Why is she in this book wrapped up? Well, honestly, not a lot. Since this book wrapped up, she's featured in Knights of X and two issue of Exterminators. And that's basically it for Betsy Braddock. As for Gambit, well, I believe recently he got his own miniseries. And I believe also he's getting their team book with, with his wife, Rogue. Yeah. Okay, since this book wrapped up, here we go. Since this book wrapped up, with issue 26, he has featured mostly in the pages of X-Men, X-Force. He has a miniseries right now, which I believe is wrapped up. He's been still featured, but mostly it's been here and there. But at least it's still been featured the past year. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about Jumbalee? <clears throat> Excuse me. As Jumbalee, let's see. Well, after this book wrapped up. She featured Knights of X, Issue of the Moons, X Terminators, and X Men. And that's basically been it. Yeah, her most recent appearance being the final issue of X Terminators. And she also featured X Men 18. How about Richter? Who, by the way, I believe in this book, he reunited with his, with his boyfriend, Shatterstar. Yeah, he appeared in the book. Do not know why, but he did. Well, after this book wrapped up, he popped up Issue of New Mutants and Issue of X-Men uh, Legends, appeared in Knights of X, and another Issue of New Mutants, and that's basically been it for him. No, seriously, that's all been it for him. As for Shatterstar, yeah, his inclusion in the book is quite surprising. Yeah, I have no idea why in the world they included the part of the book, but they did. I know Rob Liefeld has come on record that he hates the fact he was out of his gay. Yes, he absolutely hated that aspect. He thought that was an absolute stupid idea. So, what has he done? Well, I just reviewed him in the first wish of X and Bad Blood, Knights of X, and New Mutants 30. Yeah, New Mutants 30 tends to be like the most recent thing he's been involved with. Yeah. 
Which I'm like... Yeah, that apparently is his most recent thing he's a part of. It's like, anime feature Knights of X don't feature him anything at all. As for Serene, which I read it, apparently she's also based upon uh, Captain Britain's first girlfriend, who died. She is featured in Knights of X, and that's it for her. And like, everybody get featuring in that book. Yep. As for Merlin, well, just Knights of X, and that's it for him. King Arthur. Yeah, it's almost almost like everybody got featured in Knights of X, and nothing. No, seriously, it's like as soon as that book wrapped up, it's like anything associated with this group is basically been just like gone. Yep. But as for the writer herself. Tina Howard. She, of course, well, she would return to the Marvel Comics to do the Betsy Braddock book. Which, yeah. This is probably Betsy Braddock's most recent thing she's been involved with. Yeah. But Knights of X practically ended her... Now she's getting a solo book, which is interesting because... Betsy Braddock has never had an ongoing series. Nope, she's had one mini series for, for herself. Now, here's the thing the book is supposed to come out in 11 days. The Captain Britain, uh, Bardock, Bra- Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain book, which looks like her brother's going to be featured in the book. Interesting. Excuse me. Yeah, it's like, okay, we canceled the book in August of last year for reasons. And then we just bring the book back, like, not even six months later, as this, as this brand new ongoing series, Betsy Brad Kept in Britain, which is a Martina Howard, which is a return to the Marvel Comics after she, well, moved over to DC. But she's still doing Catwoman, as far as I can tell. I haven't seen her move to any of her book I, I, I've seen. Nope, not really. But yeah, that's particularly it, particular view. Next up is going to be D. Gray Man. And then I'm going to do. Is the Runter Goes Dungeon. Okay, thanks for doing. Bye.